Howdy, AP Pregal. It is Ms. Kosh. This is the second part of um, my rational functions. I'm calling it rational functions day one. Um, and I did, basically we were looking at in behavior limits based on whether our function had a, um, a larger degree in the bottom, at the same degree, top and bottom, or a larger degree at the top. Um, there was different cool stuff that was happening, so go back and watch that video. But now we are looking at, okay, what happens with my vertical asymptotes? Um, so what I decided to do for this one is I have four different functions and I have four different graphs <laughs> and we're going to try and first of all we're going to match the graph to the equation um, and then we're going to do other stuff. <laughs> so um, this first one what I might notice is that this has an asymptote, a vertical asymptote of x equals 3. You are not Chuck Norris. You can't divide by 0. Um, so let's see. Oh dear. Yeah, my eyes. <laughs> They're not what they used to be. <laughs> Don't get old. Okay. Um, do we have more than one x equals 3? Oh, we do. Okay. We've got an x equals 3 for that one. We have a vertical asymptote of x equals 3 here. We have a vertical asymptote of x equals 1, and then x equals negative 2. Okay. So that's good news. We can see the vertical asymptote of negative 2 right here. <laughs> uh, okay. This is great. So this one would be k of x which is equal to, I ran out of space, 3x plus 3 over x plus 2. Okay, I'm not just brilliant, it's right up here. I told you it was one of these four. And this is the one that has an asymptote here. Do you see this vertical asymptote at um, x equals negative 2? So that has to correspond with this one. Um, and then I divide my leading coefficients to find that this has an, an asymptote of y equals 3. Okay, so one down, we have used K for one of these. Um, and now let's, let's keep going. I'll do the rest of this stuff um, after we match the graph to its equation. Um, it looks like this has an asymptote of um, X equals 1. I mean, maybe you, you're better off because you can see better than me. <laughs> Not funny. Okay, X equals 1. Um, and so that's this equation right here. Um, so... And you see everything that I'm trying to look at there. And then it sure does look like we've got um, a y equals 3. 3 divided by 1 here is 3. So this would be y equals 3 right here. So what's my equation we just said? Um, this is the g of x one, which is equal to 3x minus 6 over x minus 1. Okay. Two down, two to go. So now I'm looking at the other, the other two are both, uh, or these two. They both have a, an asymptote of x equals um, 3, right? So, yeah, because, well, that's what's left. x equals 3, and this is x equals 3. It looks to me like this line doesn't go, this line is, is lower. So this looks like a y equals 1, um, and this looks like it's a little higher. Do you agree with my prognosis? Y equals two, and so my other two equations were these. This one has a horizontal asymptote, so this is the f of x, which is equal to two x minus four over x minus three. And that makes, so that one is gone from our consideration, and that makes this one my h of x, which is x plus two over x minus three. Because then when you divide the leading coefficients, you get one, and this looks like a y equals one. Okay, so now let's do the other stuff. Um, so um, I can't imagine that AP will give you the graph and ask you to write the equation. I just was kind of changing it up and decided to teach it this way this year. Um, okay, so here's our equation. We want the limit um, as we approach the asymptote from the left and the right. Okay, so what we do here, and I probably don't have enough space and I'm gonna write too big, so here we go. We're gonna say the limit as x approaches, well, my asymptote was at x equals three. So we're gonna approach um, the limit as x goes to three from the left, we put a little negative sign right there. Now we don't put it out front because then we'd say what's happening as x goes to negative three. I don't want x to go to negative three. I want x to go to positive three, but I want it to come from the left. Okay, and this is h of x is gonna be equal to, well, what's happening? As I get closer and closer to this, to this asymptote of x equals three, my values start going all the way, they go down, 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 down to negative infinity. And there's the first one. Okay, this one, the limit approaching from the right, we're gonna say the limit as x approaches three from the right, we're gonna put a little plus sign. This is h of x still, because that's what we said here. 
And this one, well, what's happening? As I come from the right, doo -doo 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 -doo, I shoot off to positive infinity. And there we go. Okay, the other thing that we like to talk about, of course, is um, AP loves to do their inequalities, and so we're gonna do a little sign diagram. So on this sign diagram, I need to consider my asymptote, which is at three, and sometimes I'm gonna go ahead and put, okay, I have a zero somewhere over here. Well, we can look back at the equation. A zero happens when the numerator is equal to zero. So to get the numerator equal to zero, I need x to equal negative two. I'm gonna make this a, a solid line, even though sometimes I use a dotted line, because my two problems to solve, one of them is, is just greater than, but the other one is less than or equal to. And this reminds me, this is definitely an asymptote, and this could be included or not included, depending on the problem. Okay, if that's confusing, just use dotted everywhere or solid, whatever. Okay, um, so now I wanna, so, oh wait, we didn't do this. So what happens here, we were positive, then um, between this interval we were negative, and then on this side of the asymptote we're positive again. Okay, so where is y greater than zero? Well, where are we positive? From negative infinity to two, we don't wanna include two, pick it up again and go from three to infinity. Where are we less than or equal to zero? Well, we're equal to zero at negative two because that was a zero, but we cannot be equal, we can't use three because it's an asymptote. And we were negative in that interval, and so there we go. So they would probably, AP would probably not give you the picture. They would probably give you the equation and say, tell me, and they would ask for one of these two situations. Um, so you would have to, I think it's, um, well, you can either, you have two choices, you can either think about what the graph looks like and then kind of go in the process we did, or you could say, well, where is my vertical asymptote? My vertical asymptote is x equals three. Where are my zeros? My zeros are when x equals negative two, I put those on my sign diagram and then I can plug in values in every interval into that equation. Okay, so more than one way to think through these. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so we have an asymptote at x equals one. So what we're trying to do here is we're saying the limit as x approaches a positive one from the left of g of x. Well, if we approach positive one from the left, doo -doo 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 -doo, we're shooting off to positive infinity. Okay, the limit as x approaches one from the right, that's this one, of g of x is equal from, as I approach from the right, I'm going down to negative infinity. My sign diagram, um, I have a zero when I set my numerator equal to zero, so three x minus six equals zero, add six, divide by three, that's two. So I have a zero here at positive two. I have an asymptote at positive one. And from my picture, I can tell I am positive on that side of the asymptote. Um, between the asymptote and two, here's two, it's really close. Do you see how close they are? Um, that was negative, but then from two on, we are positive again. Okay, so where am I less than, nope, that's not less than, that's greater than zero. Where am I greater than zero? Um, negative infinity to one. I can't include one because it's an asymptote. And then I'm greater than zero from two, but I, um, I can't include two because it's not an equal sign. So two to infinity. Where am I less than or equal to zero? Well, I can't ever, oh, that's a positive. I can't ever include one because it's an asymptote, but I can include two because at two I would equal zero. I was trying to change it up and make you do practice both. Um, with the equal sign and without the equal sign. So that was my intention. Um, okay, we're cruising right along. Let's just finish this up. So now, what's my asymptote? My asymptote is x equals three. Um, and so the limit as x approaches three from the left of, this is f of x. Well, what's happening? As I approach from the left, I go to negative infinity. And here's the one from the right. The limit as x approaches three from the right of f of x. When I approach from the right, I'm going off to positive infinity. I think they're kind of fun. Sign diagram, here we go. I have an asymptote at three. I have a zero. Okay, what is it? When I, when I set my numerator equal to zero, add four, divide by two, I get two. Okay, what was happening? I was between, so I'm above the x-axis, and then from here to the asymptote, I was negative. From the asymptote forever, I'm positive again. So greater than zero, I'm greater than zero from negative infinity to two, and then from three to infinity. Where am I less than or equal to zero? 
from two to three. Hard bracket, then soft bracket. Getting the hang of these? I feel like I'm getting, it's getting a little repetitive, but we got one more. I'm just gonna finish it. Okay, um, so on this one, we have, um, the, we have an asymptote at negative two, so this is the limit as x approaches negative two from the left. So it has two little negative signs. I guess it's good that I did that, of k of x. Well, so as I approach negative two from the left, I'm shooting off the positive infinity. The limit, this is this one, anyway. The limit as x approaches negative two from the right is uh, of k of x. I don't know why I wrote them so close to each other. That goes to negative infinity. This one is this one, okay. Feel like you're getting the hang of this? Tell me yes, comment below, tell me yes. Okay, um, on this one I have an asymptote at negative two and I have a zero when I set the numerator equal to zero, subtract three, um, that's a negative three divided by three is negative one, so I have a zero at negative, um, all of these things ended up really close to each other, oh well. Um, we were positive between the asymptote and the zero, I'm negative, and from the zero on I am positive because this is my x-axis right here, not the asymptote. Solve for um, y is greater than zero, negative infinity, negative two, pick it up again, negative one to infinity. Solve for less than or equal to zero. Um, that's gonna be a soft bracket on negative two because it's an asymptote, and then a hard bracket on negative one because we can equal zero. All right, like, subscribe, comment, um, let me know how I can help you, and go practice. Good luck to you.